So let's turn our attention to therapeutic cloning. And one of the kind of the focuses I would encourage you to have here is that of kind of an ethical one. Okay, so as we're going through this experience, try to think about kind of the ethics of that. I'll try and prompt you as well. Now, I'm also going to sort of follow a story here with you guys. I'm assuming you've taken the tutorial already on stem cells. So you've got a basic understanding of the process that we're talking about. So first things first. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine the laboratory condition where we have two things. Other than all the equipment and, and science that we need, we have two things. Thing number one is we have a healthy is we have a healthy patient cell. Now this cell may well be something like a skin cell or similar, but this is from the person who's poorly or has been injured. We also have a donor's egg, and this donor's egg, importantly, is unfertilized okay and we can tell that because of course we only have 23 chromosomes which is half the information half the genetic information required to produce a human being okay so here we've got all of the genetic information from the patient and that only of half we've got we haven't got the sperm donation here so sperm donation is the wrong term use my confusion we, we we don't have this egg as a fertilized ovum it is unfertilized at this stage so how do we go about doing this well first things first we are going to do the following. We are going to take our 23 chromosomes from this mother's egg or from this woman's egg and we are going to get it and we are going to get rid of it. We are going to throw it in a bin. We are going to uh, destroy it. We are going to chuck it away. Okay, so that is gone. Now, again, start to think about that straight away. What we're going to do then is we are going to take the nucleus from the patient and we are going to grab it and we are going to implant it into the donor's egg. So what that effectively leaves us with, we should already know, is that this is a zygote. Okay, we have 46 chromosomes, we have the egg which, which is required as part of the conditions for uh, development. And basically what we're left to do is a z zap, z z a zap of electricity, we give us a very small shock and what will happen is that over a period of time this zygote as we looked at through our stem cell our embryonic development will develop to be an embryo so here we go we have the process of mitosis i always say that when i always feel it rhymes we have the process of mitosis and the cells divide now again reminders these cells are all identical to one another and again remember that they have what we've talked about before total potency they have toti potency the potential to go on to become any type of human living tissue or cell so nerve cells um, they could go on to become pretty much anything and well literally anything in, in in the human body so what we now want to start thinking about with regard to thera therapeutic cloning and start noticing that this is not cloning of a whole animal it's cloning of individual cells what we'd now do is we'd start taking or like plucking out some of these cells. so maybe we take this guy here maybe we take this guy here and we we apply it to specific conditions in the laboratory we effectively we we apply a certain kind of chemical signature to it so that in that specific condition surrounded by specific proteins surrounded by specific hormones and so on and so on that eventually has got the capacity to develop into for example a nerve cell now this nerve cell would become a nerve cell because of the specific conditions that the embryonic stem cell has been provided in the laboratory now if you start to think about the clinical applications of that this means that we could potentially use this nerve cell to treat paralysis, a condition which previously has been untreatable. Okay, so that is a very, very exciting possible application of embryonic, or in this case, therapeutic clone cell, or the use of embryonic stem cells. Also, start to think what about if we develop cells which, for example, are just choosing an example, what if we cells that produce insulin, cells that produce that produce insulin the potential that has for treating type 1 diabetes is huge what about if we develop cells that produce dopamine dopamine is a neurotransmitter which is 
underproduced or absent in people experiencing Parkinson's disease. Again, the potential for therapeutic treatment is absolutely gigantic. So I'd start to encourage you to think about what the ethics of this conversation are, okay? The ethics of this conversation. In the very next tutorial, I'm gonna to start to address that. What are the ethical fors and against pros and cons for processes such as this one? So now we've got a good understanding of therapeutic cloning, therapeutic cloning, and I guess really the use of stem cells in general. I want to consider the ethics of the process that we've, we've just discussed. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm going to sort of start to link off some advantages to uh, to this process. So just consider advantages to being green, okay, uh, for obvious reasons. Advantages. So a couple of things that I would like to stress to you. There's some really obvious things. Firstly, we may see this, or as a possible uh, use, you or we could say it's used to cure, used to cure or treat, or to treat diseases. Okay, so that of course is gonna make perfect sense to us. That is a real positive thing that if we can use this this possibility. I mean, now bear in mind with diseases, you know, we're, we're using a very broad term here. Um, but I would also say if we wanna be a bit more specific, that this procedure can help us to produce replacement cells, produce replacement cells, tissues, and even organs, okay? So that clearly is a very, or potentially a very positive outcome of this type of procedure. And finally, well, it's actually not finally, but we can also produce cells of any type. Think about, again, that potency of our stem cells, which means that any cell type, theoretically at least, can be produced. A couple of other points. We are unlikely, we are unlikely to experience rejection. I'm not talking about in one's life, you know, one's um, one's partner not liking you anymore, for example. Cells unlikely uh, to experience, or the process is unlikely to experience rejection. And what we mean by that is if you compare that to something like uh, organ transplant from an organ donor, say, there is very frequently uh, rejections of the, uh, of the tissue which has been implanted. We can also argue, and a further positive, is that we've got We've got many cells for research, okay? So many cells for research, because this is not just, of course, a batch of uh, embryo or embryonic or therapeutic cloning stem cells that we're gonna use to, to, for donation or, or equivalent. What we're saying here is that our research potential goes up dramatically. And as a result of that, and I think this is a nice way to summarize that point, we would get the, redu the reduction or it reduces it reduces waiting time. Think about the threat of being on an organ, uh, an organ donor waiting list as you're waiting for an essential and major surgery very frequently. One might obviously become more and more ill. So we reduce waiting time for transplants. And of course, that means that the tendency for people to survive, to live full lives afterwards increases. Now, what we also need to do is we need to look at the negatives of this. So if we look, consider this to be disadvantages, I mean, we could look at this and say those things that some people consider to be unethical, but I am gonna include some kind of practical aspects of this as well. So first first of all, and I think this is a statement which I'm gonna be quite deliberate, deliberate with, is that we can argue that potential life is killed. Reflect on what it is that we've discussed and decide in your own mind whether you agree or you disagree with that. We also have a shortage, a shortage of egg donation, okay? So it's not necessarily easy on a practical level to achieve this, there, there are shortages, um, and, there, and there are actually some risks to collecting eggs as well. So we've got to consider that. We've also got the fact that we do not, we do not yet know the full risk. Okay, and what we mean by that is that this is a relatively new science, and as a result of that, the, the series of occasions and processes where this would be undertaken are relatively few, and therefore the things that can go wrong are relatively unknown. Okay, so that's interesting. Penultimately, we may transfer 
we may transfer viral infection. Okay, so there are um, issues of transfer, potential cross infection, and finally, we've also got a poor success. <laughs> this one's a C here. Poor success rates. Poor success rates uh, to produce viable eggs. To produce viable eggs. Viable eggs. So the only point I would make really is that we've mentioned the ethics of this. I mean, I think the ethical side really comes here in this point, doesn't it? These you could describe at least to a degree as practical negatives or, dis or potential practical disadvantages. The ethical aspect sits quite firmly here. All right, so I'd encourage you to think about those points.